Hello, my name is Chippo Zabaraji, and today we are going to talk about the bacteria, Mycobacterium libre. First, we are going to focus on the physiology and structure of Mycobacterium libre. Mycobacterium is a strongly fast acid bacillus Y-shaped bacteria that has rounded ends and parallel sides. It closely resembles the bacteria tubercule bacillus. Mycobacterium libre occurs in large numbers in the lesions of Lepromatous leprosy, simply known as leprosy. It chiefly masses with lepra cells. Often it is grouped together like bundles of cigars are arranged in a polished sack. As we can as we can see in this image, the Mycobacterium libre as right, it's right shaped and it has, um, is in a circular form. The most striking part of Mycobacterium libre are its intracellular and extracellular masses known as glabi, which consists of clumps of bacilli and capsular material. Under the electron microscope, which we see here, Mycobacterium libre has many forms. The most common is a slightly curved filament, raised to 10 meters in, in length containing irregular arrangements of dense material, sometimes in the shape of rods, like I said before. The short rod-shaped structures can also be seen, identical with the rod-shaped inclusions within the filaments, and also dense spherical, spherical forms. In fact, I, based on this electron microscope image, it looks like microbacterium libre is circular. You can see the circular dots. However, it's actually a rod shape, which you can also see if you look closely. Some of the groups of bacilli can be seen to have a limited membrane. The pathogenesis and immunity of Mycobacterium libre. The pathogenesis of Mycobacterium libre infection is not very well known, and the mode of transmission of Mycobacterium libre is probably poorly understood. However, most of the evidence based on research suggests that clinical manifestations of mycobacterium infection come primarily from host immune responses to leprosy bacillus. Mycobacterium libre is strictly pathogenic and is, very, is uncommon in the United States. Even though it's uncommon in the United States, you can find it's more prevalent in third world countries like in South America and Africa. Most common mode of transmission of Mycobacterium libre is thought to be through the respiratory route in a way similar to that of tuberculosis. Inoculation of bacilli through broken skin and other close physical contact has also been implicated. In the southeastern United States, animal armadillos carry Mycobacterium libre, and contact with these animals is presumed to cause some infections in this, re in this region of the United States. However, most people are resistant to infection with Mycobacterium libre. However, certain genotypes predispose individuals to getting Mycobacterium libre infections. More on the pathogenesis and the immunity of Mycobacterium libre. Both human leukocyte antigen, HLA, and non H. LA, human leukocyte antigen alias have been linked to susceptibility to Mycobacterium libre infection. A recent genome-wide association study in Eastern China associated with variant genes in the NOD2 signal pathway with susceptibility to infection with Mycobacterium libre. The immune response to Mycobacterium libre varies among individuals, but is thought to be responsible for the different clinical appearance of leprosy in various patients and individuals. Type 1 reaction on leprosy is characterized by the development of strong skin test reactivity as well as lymphocyte responsiveness and a predominant Th1 response. Neutrophils may contribute to the bulk of TNF production that is associated with tissue damage in leprosy. TNF alpha may augment or increase the immune response towards elimination of the Mycobacterium libre pathogen and or mediate the pathologic manifestations of leprosy. TNF-alpha can be induced following stimulation of cells with total or components of, namely, libra-rabinomenin, 
the mycobacterium, the polypoparasaccharides that exist in the bacteria. The epidemiology of mycobacterium libre. Like I said before, the occurrence of mycobacterium libre in the United States is very, um, is not that much. It's more common in third world countries. For example, fewer than 300,000 new cases of mycobacterium libre infections were reported in 2005 for most of the cases in India, Nepal, and Brazil. About 100 new cases only were reported in the United States each year, annually. Mycobacterium libre causes the lepromatous form of leprosy disease, but not the tubercular form, and is highly infectious. And people can get mycobacterium libre infection through person-to-person -person contact or inhalation of infectious aerosols and skin contact with respiratory secretions and wound exudates. Numerous mycobacterium libre are found in the nasal secretions of patients with lepromatous leprosy. As we can see in this image here, this is showing lepromatous form of mycobacterium libre on the skin, enhancing disease. And infectious aerosols can spread mycobacterium libre. The clinical disease and syndromes of mycobacterium libre. Leprosy is a chronic infection that affects the skin and peripheral nerves. The spectrum of tissue involvement is influenced by patient's immune status. The tubercular form of leprosy is milder and the lesions are characterized by hyperpigmented skin and aesthetic macules. As we can see in this image, this image is showing the lepromatous leprosy skin lesion that exists in leprosy, which is caused by mycobacterium libre. The lepromatous form is associated with disfiguring skin lesions nodules, plaques, thickened dermis, and involvement of the nasal mucosa. More about the clinical disease, diseases and syndromes of mycobacterium libre. The signs and symptoms of different forms of leprosy vary because patients present heterogeneous signs and symptoms. In other words, patient, patients present different signs and symptoms which make it hard to diagnose mycobacterium libre infection and leprosy. The period between infection and the overall disease varies widely from several months in some individuals to 30 to 40 years. The disease typically affects the skin, nerves, and eyes, and patients may present with skin lesions like we saw in that image before, weakness or numbness, eye pain as we see here in this image, or loss of vision. A clinical diagnosis of leprosy should always be suspected in someone with skin lesion and or enlarged nerves accompanied by sensory loss. This picture here is showing the conjunctival lepromy with hypopion in a patient with proven lepromatous leprosy. As you can see, there's a discoloration in the patient's eye and this might lead to loss of vision for the patient. Treatment, prevention, and control. How can mycobacterium libre infection be treated and controlled? Leprosy can be cured with antibiotics and other treatments. The tubercular form is treated with revampicin and dapsin for six months. Clopazamine, which is a drug, is added to this regimen for treatment of the lepromatous form, and therapy is extended to a minimum of 12 months. Lepromatous and tubercular forms of leprosy are controlled through prompt coordination and treatment of infected people. As we can see in this major image, these are the drugs, some of the drugs used for treating leprosy of mycobacterium libre infection, rivampicin and clofacinine or leprosy medications. More about the treatment and prevention and control of mycobacterium libre leprosy. A late leprosy diagnosis occurs by conducting a skin biopsy. A small sample of the patient's abnormal skin is removed and sent to a lab to be examined. The skin smear test may also be done. Repressive bacillary leprosy no bacteria will be detected, however, with multibacillary leprosy, bacteria are expected to be found on the skin smear test. In the 
last two decades, more than 14 million people with leprosy have been cured. The World Health Organization provides free treatment for all people with leprosy. This image at the top shows the different treatments, adult treatments and children's treatments for individuals with passivacillary leprosy and multivacillary leprosy. It shows the individual amount of drugs the individuals need each month. Novel drugs and therapeutics of mycobacterium libre. Mycobacterium libre infections such as leprosy can be treated with bacillus, cow meat, green BCD vaccine, rica balicin, and monopolyatic drug combinations. The rampacin and clofazamine that I mentioned before are also used to treat mycobacterium libre leprosy. This can be augmented, treatment can be augmented by using more medications such as dapsin or anti-inflammatory drugs and by using conducting a skin biopsy which is needed in the diagnosis of microbiome infections. Thank you very much.